Hi there, it's Megan, and welcome to the Learn to Monetize More video series. In this tutorial, we're going to teach you best practices in DFP for small businesses. So far, we've helped you navigate through the interface with ease and walked you through many steps, such as using macros and planning your campaign. In this particular video, we'll grant you guidance on best practices that we've learned at Monetize More through our extensive experience in using DFP for various publishers and projects. Are you ready? Let's get started. In DFP, we have the ability to run different ad networks to target our inventories. Each ad network may represent multiple advertisers and agencies. Your publishing needs may include serving ads from just a single ad partner or up to hundreds of partners, each with unique placements, creatives, targeting, and reporting requirements. Needless to say, all of these details can become quite overwhelming if you don't have Learn to Monetize More's best practices on hand. We've done a tremendous amount of work in DFP and we want to share our best practices cultivated from our trials and errors. So let's get to it! Here is a rundown of our best practices. Feel free to implement any and all into your campaigns. Number 1. For starters, possibly the most important and simplest best practice you can initiate in your campaigns are installing a consistent naming convention for new orders, new line items, and creatives. Why are naming conventions so important? Naming conventions enable you to organize data quickly and efficiently, both when trafficking and pulling reports when tracking a campaign's performance. First up is the naming convention when creating a new order. We've found that naming conventions must be information rich, yet include only the most essential details. Arguably, the most general and most important element of a new order is the site name. We found labeling the order using the following format most useful through the entire workflow of a project through to reporting. Site name, space, ad network. Let's plug in a fictitious site name and ad network so you can get a feel for this naming convention. For example, the site animalballoons.com serving on the clown ad network would be formatted as follows. Animal Balloons space clown. When it comes to naming new line items, we've found it's absolutely crucial to delineate the various elements with an underscore and organize the information and in the most general to the most specific detail of importance. The following format works best. Site name, followed by the ad network, the size, placement name, and geotargeting as follows. Site name, underscore ad network, underscore size, underscore placement, underscore geotarget, or seeing the naming convention in action with our fictitious site and ad network. Animal balloons, underscore clown, underscore 728 by 90, underscore sky banner, underscore geotarget. And finally, when it comes to uploading creatives, for which there can be literally hundreds or thousands within a longtime partner's account, we recommend the following. Creative name, underscore creative size, underscore file extension. For example, balloon hat underscore 728 by 90 underscore SWF. Whether you decide to implement our naming convention best practices or to create your own format, we do recommend that once the naming convention is finalized, it's best to document and make it available to all participants to follow and keep consistent. Number two. Next up on our list of best practices is incorporating DFP's targeting functionality. Targeting is defined sets of criteria that you manually specify at the line item level. When you target ads to specific audiences, you increase relevancy within advertisers' inventory. There isn't just one targeting strategy that fits into our list of best practices. The great thing about targeting is that you can incorporate a combination of key values into your line items to get laser-focused ad unit and placement profiles. Let's go into more detail, starting with geotargeting. Geotargeting is a highly advantageous method of trafficking localized creative to an audience. With geotargeting, you can target line items to countries, regions, U.S. metro areas, and zip codes. You can even search for a specific country from DFP's library and drill down to a specific city, or use the search targeting feature to exclude places. As an example, you can target country equals England, and 
city equals London to target England but exclude London. Placement targeting gives you an even greater granular control, allowing you to target line items to a specific placement, like a 728 by 90 banner ad on your homepage or across all placement inventory within your network. We recommend to set up a placement targeting as a one-by-one -one ratio, where one line item is equal to one placement. If they are delivered on a price priority level, you can target a maximum of two placements in the same line item to avoid missing a creative on the third placement on the same page. This creates fluidity when pricing the inventory. Please note there should always be an ATF or above the fold, where the ads are visible on the screen without needing to scroll down, and a BTF or below the fold, where the ads are not visible on the screen until the user scrolls down. Device targeting is a great targeting feature to incorporate into your campaigns, presuming you have a good percentage of traffic across various devices, such as desktop, tablet, and mobile. Since desktop plays a higher CPM, we recommend you delineate each device at the placement level, inputting the actual CPM value per device type. If your campaign incorporates different creatives across various devices, you may want to integrate creative level targeting to aggregate impressions. One final note on targeting, targeting is done at the line item level only. If you need to apply targeting to a specific creative, a separate line item with its unique targeting rules must be created. We will discuss key value targeting to a specific creative in a future Learn to Monetize More video lesson. Number 3. Finally on our list of best practices to integrate into your DFP campaign management is DFP's reporting feature. These tips and best practices will help you reap all of the benefits out of DFP's robust reporting platform, both in Q&A a campaign after it's gone live, as well as furthering your ability to optimize sites, ad slots, and creatives. Shortly after a campaign or new creative goes live, pull a report including the click-through URL data. Reviewing the click-through URL as associated with each creative will help you ensure the campaign has gone live without a hitch. And if you do happen to see a discrepancy within the URL, you can fix it before wasting too many impressions. Pull a demographics report and get a more accurate idea of where your traffic is coming from. Having this data in your pocket can help you streamline your campaign, adding geotargeting to get maximum impact for every impression. Pull reports to gain greater analysis of a campaign's volume of traffic. In this way, you can decide wisely on which platform you would like to build your marketing efforts on or which device plays the higher CPM. This information may even influence you on an ad placement layout, offering some website design inspiration. Number 4. Tools. Be sure to utilize DFP's many fantastic tools to maximize the success of your campaigns and assist in solving common traffic issues more efficiently. We've assembled just a handful of our favorite DFP tools that publishers have at their disposal here. However, there are many more worth exploring. The Google Publisher Toolbar DFP Integration Tool is an ad bar for Chrome browsers. While the tool only works with the newer Google Publisher tags and not Google Manager tags, it offers several benefits including view the exact line item and creative displaying in a particular ad slot, discover why an ad slot may be showing an unexpected line item or creative, and learn why a particular ad slot may not be serving a creative at all. Next on our list are the Chrome Developer Tools, a comprehensive suite of web authoring and diagnosing problematic creatives or finding the source of an ad. Chrome Developer Tools are definitely worth incorporating into your Q&A workflow. And last but not least, we also suggest the Google Publisher Console Tool. This is a screen debugging tool that can assist with solving ad display discrepancies. How does it work? By scanning your web page for some of the most common JavaScript tagging errors, the console tool quickly locates all of the ad units and creatives on the page and then offers a visualized view of the ad request behavior. As with the Google Publisher toolbar, the console only works for Google Publisher tags. 
We hope you've enjoyed this lesson in DFP best practices. The DFP platform is quite robust, and this list of best practices and tools merely scratches the surface. We hope you continue your journey and discover more tips and tricks. Perhaps soon, you will be sharing your discoveries with us at Monetize More. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Also, learn to monetize more by watching our tutorial series and reading our latest ad optimization tips. Please subscribe to our blog to receive periodic updates. Thanks. We'll catch you next time.